Welcome to B-Movie Euphoria's VHS Roulette, which the premise of this show is that I go to a couple thrift stores like I always do because it's very calming to me. I just look for tapes. Sometimes I find them, sometimes I find nothing, but this time I found a lot of tapes and I have to pick one out of those tapes and then I gotta watch. Sometimes it's exciting because you never know what you're gonna get until you take a chance on something and then it lets you down horribly. Today's movie is the sexy erotic thriller from 1994, I believe. Christopher Lambert and Diane Lane in Night Moves. I want to play a game with you. In a game of life and death. There's no blood. Where the hell's the blood? One wrong move. You know, Andy thinks you're doing this. Could be his last. You like to play games, don't you? He's using the map as a chessboard. Christopher Lambert, Diane Lane, Tom Skerritt. Go, go! Night Moves. That's right. We're going to be talking about chess. A whole lot of chess and intrigue. Before we get into Christopher Lambert's character, who's just this famed, amazing chess player. But the big story is the amazing comeback of Peter Sanderson, who is currently leading the tournament. European grandmaster, now residing in Westport, Connecticut. And also, he's really horny. Like, he's, he's a big horn dog. It opens in black and white, so we know it's the past. And we have these two kids playing chess, and they're playing it, you know, the professional way, where there's a clock in between, they're slapping it, and then moving their things, and then writing little things. I don't really know how professional chess matches go, but that this looked like one. One kid wins. One kid loses. The kid that loses does not take it very well. <laughs> we go to that kid's house, the kid that stabbed the other kid, and the dad is like, your kid is crazy. He's a nutbag. And he just slams the door and leaves. It pans upstairs as the little boy goes upstairs and he sees his mom has uh, slit her wrists and is on the bed just bleeding out and there's tons of blood and uh, whew. so he goes into the little dresser and just kind of very calmly takes out a chessboard and then walks away and that's the beginning of the movie we know that there's a reason for things that are going to happen but we're not really, you know, given all the facts, which is normal in this kind of movie. So now we're back in present time, or the 90s, and uh, Christopher Lambert is a very successful um, chess player, hound dog, um, just getting, getting laid all the time. Christopher Lambert, he's hot in a very weird way. And I think that's the best way, to be hot in a weird way. And he has that very, very, I'm going to look at you like this, but I'm also kind of non-threatening in a weird way. And I like that about him. Get me the police. He was in the original Highlander movies, which were great. And he, I think, played Raiden in the Mortal Kombat films. Not the new one, but the old ones. There isn't really a lot for him to do in this movie other than he, I guess he portrays the character of someone that you're supposed to sympathize with, even though he's kind of, um, weird and he kind of likes playing with people and playing with the police for no reason. It wasn't serious. What's your problem? You are. I don't like you. Fine. Don't ask me how on a date. Don't worry, I won't. I've seen how your dates end up. Knock it off! It seems like the only reason he is um, 
confounding kind of to the police is that he's playing with them because he thinks it's fun because he's a chess player. Christopher Lambert is on this tour and finally comes to this place where they're, they have this big chess event. He knows everybody and every, everybody's kind of chilling with him. He has this great erotic sex scene with a lady. Then later that night, she is attacked. And all of the attacks in this movie, and there are several um, death attacks, they are... Um, it starts with a flash, like a very huge flash, like from one of those old time um, reporter cameras. And then when the victims are found, this first victim is found, they are laid in bed very neatly and very serenely, like hands on their chest. And I can only describe <laughs> the makeup looks like what modern day Joker makeup looks like. I'm talking about like the Heath Ledger kind of um, Jared Leto kind of bleeding Joker face look. That's what all of the victims look like. So the first victim looks like that and then he writes, uh, remember in blood. And then he subsequently writes a bunch of other things at, on all the victims. I'm not going to remember what all those things were. And really, it would kind of ruin the experience for you if I did remember. So this is for your benefit, really. She gets killed. The police, led by Tom Skerritt as chief of police and his partner or deputy, I guess, uh, Daniel Baldwin, who, according to Wikipedia, it ha admitted that he was uh, on a heavy coke binge throughout this movie. And you can tell. And it's great. Hey, what are you doing? You're crazy! Yeah. Peter Sanderson, you're under arrest. I'd like to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. If there is no other reason if you hate chess, if you hate Christopher Lambert, I wouldn't even say if you hate Diane Lane, because who could hate Diane Lane? Fuck you. But if for anything else, you need to watch this movie for Daniel Baldwin being coked out of his fucking mind. Tom Skerritt and Daniel Baldwin show up at Christopher Lambert's place, and they grill him over... You know, where were you? What were you doing? And he's just kind of like playing with them and being very Christopher Lambert and being very coy and playful with them. And I'm just like, <sighs> I know the movie has to do this, so you kind of suspect him. The movie also wants you to try to figure it out on your own, but he is being super, like, guilty. Daniel Baldwin's character really suspects him and really is just like, we gotta nail this guy to the wall. We need to take him back to our place and just, you know, slam his face into the toilet over and over again. That's how he's like through the entire movie. So, um, I warned you. So they're questioning Christopher Lambert and he's telling them everything he knows, which is at first he says he doesn't really know the girl that he slept with that was just murdered the police walk away from the interview kind of feeling like he is their only suspect so far and they got to keep a better eye on him. So Tom Skerritt goes to this psychiatrist that he knows. This psychiatrist sends Diane Lane, who plays, who is a psychiatrist in the movie, who kind of secretly goes and interviews Christopher Lambert while he's in the sauna, in a very weird and awkward scene. There's a lot of weird and awkward scenes in this movie. Okay. 
So Diane Lane goes into the shower and or the the sauna, and Christopher Lambert is already in there, and he just stares at her with the Christopher Lambert look. She immediately just try, tries to psychoanalyze him, and of course he doesn't fall for it, and gets real creepy with her, and grabs her by the arm, and is like, who are you? Eventually they all start working together, because people keep dying, not necessarily people that... Um, Peter knows Christopher Lambert's character, and it's named Peter, by the way. People are getting murdered in pretty much the same way, and they're ending up with Joker faces, and it's pissing the police off. Lambert is getting phone calls at his residence, at his house, and so the police try to track the phone calls, and they're listening, and the guy is just kind of like, I'm, this is how I'm going to do the next one. And sends him riddles and stuff. And that kind of stuff I could care less about. But the whole dynamic between uh, Lambert and Diane Lane is really good. After they're done being pissed at each other, they, of course, they, they kind of get it on. And apparently, at the time this movie was made, Lambert and Diane Lane were married. So the ensuing sex scene that happens is great. So this is something that I was thinking about while I was watching the movie. There are a lot of nice, slow sex scenes in this movie, and it's something that is kind of missing from today's movies, and watching it and watching these kind of slow, you know, on top sex scenes and stuff like that, that's how, as a kid, that's how I thought sex was going to be. Like this very slow and like stylized, that's just kind of how I thought it was gonna turn out like that. And you know what? It is. Throughout the film, uh, you know you're you're supposed to be kind of figuring it out it out with the police and with uh, Peter, and if you have ever seen any movie like this before, you will know who the killer is within the first twenty minutes. That's why I implore you to watch this because if you don't believe me watch the movie, and then just look, look for who you think, you know, hmm. Throughout the film, we get Tom Skerritt and Daniel Baldwin kind of giving Christopher Lambert a lot of crap. We get Christopher Lambert playing a lot of chess. We get a lot of big um, chess pieces slowly falling in slow motion, being pushed down. <laughs> A lot of great um, artsy direction with slow movements and the camera moving all over the place. So that's really fun. And the mystery itself is very, very simple, but it all gets explained at the end. So... Game's over. It's an interesting, fun movie with a very simple plot and not a lot of deep thought was put into this film, but it is fun. The allusions to chess are very funny. The best, the best part that I want to talk about in this movie, and if it wasn't intentional, I, it was, it had to have been intentional. Either way, there's a point where Diane Lane's character um, suspects Christopher Lambert's character because there's all this damning evidence that's coming out that's kind of showing that he might be the killer. So at one point, they're both in his apartment and she's like, oh, I need to leave. I have to go because she just found a phone book with all the names of the murder victims circled. So she's scared of him, and he uh, 
he takes one step towards her and, and she takes one step back. And it's clearly like moves on a chessboard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, night moves. That's the movie. I would recommend it because it was pretty fun, if pretty generic, um, and a good good watch. So that's a surprising VHS roulette. Thank you for watching yet again. Jeremy was my best friend.